All right, welcome to everybody who has joined us this evening for our special extended learning lab. Uh, since encampment was this past weekend, uh, I've asked that some key participants call in and sort of walk us through um, some of their experiences. Um, I'm gonna start out with the pre-encampment video that I know was coordinated by our public affairs team. So we'll give you a quick look at that. Let me uh, get that started for you with some audio. There we go. If you were watching online, you caught the technical difficulty that screen share stopped right before I hit play. But the great news is that you can actually watch that video on our YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and type Cascade Falcon, um, that's actually all you need to be able to type in and you're going to find that video there. Um, so I actually just got a text from Lieutenant Colonel Tim Kelly. Let me check that. And are you on the line with us, sir? I am. Excellent. Okay. So do you want to talk about uh, some of your efforts at encampment? I've got on the screen here the uh, Facebook event page that you were loading things into. But go for it. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that you can the experience for the cadets, something they can keep. And especially my, my goal is to have a kind of see what's going on. And especially the parents. Um, if you're not familiar with the cat snug mode page, I was going photos up there with limited internet. It took some coffee time to go into Oak Harbor, but got them up. And my game five and six photos should be up this weekend. You get home and other things start to grab you and you get behind on your cat work. But that should be up this week along with the final video of the camp that should be done this week, which will be, be out. But, I tried really, one thing I noticed in the past where the folks who got on our flight or on our cadet really wasn't communicated back to the home unit. So I tried with our Facebook page post this time to really let the home unit know, hey, your cadet did a great thing in the camp, be sure you celebrate it. Absolutely. Um, 
absolutely. Um, and I really, I want to just thank you for recognizing each of those things that the honor flight communication, and then as you were saying, being able to put even just a few photos up every day for the parents. That's something that we've definitely heard in the past. They really, really appreciate. And that, that helps to continue um, their buy-in and support to send their cadet to things like this. Um, so I have here on this screen, you mentioned um, Civil Air Patrol's Smug Mug page. And for those not in the public affairs world, that's a service, uh, Flickr used to be a photo sharing service. Smug Mug is a photo sharing service that National Headquarters has bought into. And so uh, for encampments and high level things like that, they're actually having people upload these photos to Smug Mug. And so these photos that were captured at encampment this year are not only accessible to us, but these are literally loaded into National Headquarters uh, website for photo sharing. So uh, these can be used in their marketing materials and things like that. So I just want to thank Colonel Kelly for taking the extra time to make sure that those things were done. Um, so there's photos through here. I'm gonna click through some of these, but I know that we have some cadets on the phone that went to encampment. Um, I see that Cadet Desimone is on the line. Um, Cadet Desimone, do you wanna tell us what you were doing at encampment this year? Sure, um, so I was Cadet Plans and Curriculum Officer. Uh, basically what that means is I was in charge of the schedule, uh, making sure that classes had instructors, uh, arranging tours, basically making sure that the encampment curriculum set by national got completed so that everyone could have credit, um, and also to make sure everyone had fun. That was also part of my thing. Um, so some of the highlights of, of my particular job this year, um, being on exec staff in general is very rewarding. Um, but particular in this position, um, you really get to work with the commander and the cadet commander to make the encampment what you got, what those people want it to be. Um, you really get to make it your own. Um, whether that be having all cadets teach the classes or have a special 4th of July celebration, um, do certain tours, whatever it is, you can make it your own, um, which is really rewarding. Um, and you're the main person that gets to plan everything. So when you get to encampment, you really get to see your own, your personal plan come together um, and have your months of hard work um, get recognized and have it all work out, hopefully, really well. Um, this year, the scheduling and everything went really well. Uh, myself, um, especially Captain Cobb, worked a lot ahead of time um, and everything went, went really well. Um, as well as all those, those really fun parts of the position. You also, you do have some issues. Um, you're always gonna have um, personnel issues, mm -hmm. um, but the most rewarding part of being on exec staff is you get to help and to see how these cadre work through their problems, um, help each other through it. Um, and even sometimes you'll have a part in a, a part to play um, in solving those issues. And it, um, it's all around is really, really rewarding. You point out an excellent point, um, which when I went to encampment and experienced that as a training officer for the first time, it became really clear to me, it, it, it was illustrated for me very clearly, that encampment is not just encampment for the students who are there. It's its own encampment for the cadre who are there. And they're learning at another level and experiencing everything at their level. So everyone there, and in fact, the training officers are experiencing their own encampment as well. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of leadership to be learned the whole week. Um, let's talk to another cadet who is there. I believe, is Cadet Tracy on the line with us? Let's see. Cadet Tracy, if you're not there, I will go ahead and go to Cadet Master Sergeant Nguyen. Hello. Hi there. Who is this? Go ahead. And Hi. Go ahead and identify yourself. Um, this is Audit Master Sergeant Nguyen. And and what did, what was your experience at encampment? Were you a student? Yeah, I was a student. And what did you think? It was like very fun. Like I like the root, like the 
uh, team building exercises. Oh, team like, you, know, you actually get to like you know bond with people. You know, like you know, you're at even though you're at a little level, you work as a team. Right. Right. Yeah, it's it's an, an interesting experience to be bonded with a bunch of people that you just met and have to figure out how to become a team, for sure. Um, Cadet Lieutenant Wickenhagen, I see you're on the line. Uh, do you want to tell us about your experience? Uh, it was it was an interesting week for sure. There were some challenges that I think the the cadre as a whole had to kind of overcome. So. <laughs> And what was your role? I was I was a flight commander at the encampment. So excellent. Did you bring home any uh, any awards for your flight? I got honor flight for the entire encampment. Yeah. Oh, congratulations! That's that's awesome. Round of applause. Thank you. Yay! Yeah. Fantastic. Um, are there other cadets on the line that I haven't called out? Anyone who wants? I see. Let's see. Cadet Weir, do you want to tell us about your experience? I believe you're from Overlake. <laughs> were you uh, were you on staff there, Cadet Weir? All right, we'll come back to you. Uh, I see Cadet Chesmore Walling on the line. On the line, do you want to share with us too? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm also from Rick. I was public affairs with some of these other people who are on the line. Um, I I just basically ran around and tried to get photos of everyone, which was fun because it ended up giving me a good perspective on what all the cadets were doing throughout the day because I could be with all the different groups of cadets and didn't really have to stick with a single group. Hey, Cadet, my, uh, this is uh, Major Michael Moore here from Wing Headquarters. I had a question for you. You know, you actually comment your job is probably one of the most important ones at an activity uh, because I've lived the experience of having an entire unit that got missed in all those photographs at an event. And then afterwards, the heartbreak was just almost unbearable when they're like looking through the slideshows and the presentations and everything, and none of them are in there. So really critical job that you had there, making sure to get, you know, photos of as many different people as you possibly could in there. So congratulations on doing that. Thank you. Absolutely. I hope we got everyone. <laughs> Good a lot of photos. We appreciate the efforts that you guys put forth. It was clear that you cared about what you were doing and it, you weren't just there to take close-ups of your best friends. So that's awesome. Um, are there other cadets that want to share with us? We have, I, I see a lot of callers today, so. Um. Yeah, so I was at encampment. I was the hotel flight commander. Um, I am Cadet First Lieutenant Bradley Gorham. Oh, welcome. And what was your experience? So it was a really long week, but it was great <laughs> to see all of the cadre and all of the students come together to make the week successful. Uh, like Lieutenant Wickenhagen said, there was definitely a lot of uh, interpersonal issues that had to get solved. Uh, we had three cadets in all who on cadre who had to get sent home uh, due to various reasons, but it was definitely a good week. I understand there was a fever that ran through the encampment and that's that's one of them. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's challenging. And you said interpersonal. And I think if, if for the cadets who are on the line, you're, you're more than invited to stay with us in a couple of minutes when we shift over to our actual learning lab. Uh, we're focusing on leadership. And I would tell you that uh, even on the senior side, that interpersonal issues seem to be the biggest barrier barrier to getting things done in Civil Air Patrol. It's, it's all interpersonal issues. So if we can figure out how to master that through leadership and using our core values, um, then I think we can get through anything. Yeah, my advice to anybody in a command position is to remind them that 90% of what you're going to do as a commander is deal with interpersonal problems. So. Yeah, for sure. Not as a bad thing. It's just that's no, what you have to do. Yeah. That's just life. Yeah. Um, I see Colonel Maxwell um, is on the line with us, and I know, ma'am, you had some hands in uh, encampment as well. Do you want to share any notes with us before we wrap this session up? No, I think it was a, a, a challenging uh, encampment for, especially, like you say, I think the highest temperature was maybe 65, and that was with a wind, so I guess that helped a lot of the colds and coughs and stuff that went through. Uh, it was a tough group of cadets. They 
were up for the challenge, and I think all of our students, 100% of them graduated, and that had a lot to do with the cadre that you're hearing on the phone, making sure that they were trained and taken care of, and that they did um, accomplish their mission of getting through encampment. So um, I think it was a lot of lessons learned, and we're ready to start planning next year's. Awesome. Look at you, all ready for next year. Starting. Sorry. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I want to thank all of the cadets who called in this evening. I am glad that we got your attention. Hopefully you'll stick around as we shift into our second topic. This is uh, the normal learning lab uh, time slot at 6.15. And I'm going to go ahead and mute somebody's noisy line. Hmm. Oh. All right, gotcha. Okay, so this is our normal learning lab timing, um, and we're going to talk about leadership tonight. And I do have some more videos uh, from the National Commander series, so let me pull those up for you. And we will launch, we're actually gonna watch all three in a row, and then we'll talk about them on the other side. So go ahead and grab your popcorn, cup of coffee, a soda, something like that, and we will talk to you in just a few minutes. Greetings. Again, thanks so much for joining me on this journey, this uh, discussion on leadership. Spent some time talking about leadership styles, talking about basic tenets of servant leadership, I'd like to go ahead and transition into techniques uh, for effective leadership. Of course, we're talking from a perspective of a volunteer uh, organization, Civil Air Patrol, uh, but uh, I've got a lot of miles on the odometer, and I've had the privilege of uh, being a leader in the Air Force, industry, other nonprofits, Civil Air Patrol as well. Uh, so. Uh, the techniques that I'd like to talk about are not just for volunteers, but they are, I believe, applicable no matter what line of work you might be in. But we're talking from the perspective of Civil Air Patrol. The first thing that I'd like to stress <clears throat> for being an effective leader is to remember two things. Number one, being a leader is a privilege, and it's also an obligation. <clears throat> Nobody owes you the obligation to be a leader. Nobody owes me saying, well, Mark Smith must be the national commander. It's a privilege. We have been given the privilege to serve in a leadership perspective. So remember, it's not an entitlement. It's not an obligation. It's something that we are privileged with to be able to serve to serve the folks within our organization and to serve the larger organization that we're a part of. The flip side of that coin is the obligation. Uh, there are a lot of obligations that come along with being a leader. <clears throat> Remember that you have a duty to perform, not only for the success of your organization, for the people within your organization, but also for the success of the larger organization that you're a part of. Those obligations come with you saying yes to being in a leadership position. So remember, it's a privilege and it's an obligation as well. Have that particular mindset as you serve as a leader is going to help you to be successful individually. It'll help your organization to be successful as well. Thank you. Greetings. Thanks for being a part of this journey that we call exploring leadership. And we're now talking about different techniques for being effective as a leader. And I'd like to talk about something called authentic leadership. There is actually, it's a formal title to a leadership style. To me, uh, it's uh, it's one of those things that we just need to do. Uh, you, you might uh, buy into servant leader, or you may say, I'm a charismatic leader, or a visionary leader, or a transformational leader. That's all good. Uh, but whatever style of leader that you think you are, and you need to be your own style, is 
you need to be authentic. Uh, you need to be real. You know, uh, for the folks that you've worked with, the folks that you work for, you can see if somebody is not being real to you, you can see right through that, can't you? Well, it's the same in Civil Air Patrol with cadets. They're looking at their cadet leaders, cadets looking at the senior members, for the senior members looking at the leaders as well. If someone is not being genuine, you can be, you can see right through that. So the key is to be authentic, just be real, tell the truth. If you're gonna say something, mean it. If you're gonna say you're gonna do something, do it. Uh, and that way it will help to instill trust that folks will understand that, uh, that you're a real person, that you're speaking from the heart, uh, that what you say is what you mean is what you're going to try to do as well. Authentic leadership, uh, make that part of your, just how you do business as a leader. It's going to help you to be successful in your organization as well. Thank you. One more. Greetings. Thanks for being a part of this journey called leadership. And we've been talking about tips or techniques for effective leadership. What I'd like to talk about the, in this video, you could, we, there's courses, there's books that are written about this, and that's communication and effective communication. And uh, to me, effective communication is a journey, not a destination. It's something that I have to work on every day, every day to try to be an effective communicator. Sometimes I think I'm a pretty good communicator and something will happen and I go, well, maybe I wasn't so good after all. But communication is absolutely essential for you and for me to be effective as leaders. Uh, you have a vision for where you want to take the organization. You have goals and objectives. You have tasks, jobs that need to be done. How can you get your team motivated? How can it be clear to your organization where it is that you're trying to go and how you're going to get there? without being able to effectively communicate to them. And so uh, uh, bring it down to them. Uh, again, be authentic, genuine, like we talked about before. Uh, help them to understand the why that it is that you're trying to, uh, to get something done. Don't rely just on email or a text. Face-to-face uh, -face is a wonderful thing to do. Um, and uh, something uh, that uh, Stephen Covey said in his book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is along the lines of seek first to understand and then to be understood. So remember, as a part of this communication, this two-way dialogue, make sure that you understand where the individual on your team is and your team overall is coming from what they're really saying to you, both verbally and nonverbal, to see how effective it is uh, that you are communicating your message as well. Effective communication, absolutely paramount to you being effective as a leader. Thank you. Okay, thank you to everybody who was able to hang in there with that. Um, so I thought that the three of those videos, one of them you might have recognized, although we don't have the same people on here every week. Um, one of them we repeated, that was actually the communication one that went last. Um, but there's some really great information in there. Uh, one, the seek first to understand. I think that we often um, can, can avoid a lot of the issues we run into if we just slow down and ask questions first. Um, instead of going straight to what we think is targeting the, the solution. A lot of times there's elements in the middle that if we just seek first to understand how we got to what seems like a crazy, terrible, um, how did we ever get here situation, there may be three or four reasons between point A and point F that little tiny mistakes were made. And it's not, it's not something that requires whacking somebody's head off for a giant catastrophe, even though that's what you ended up with. Um, because there's a lot of people between those two points that just needed some gentle corrective feedback. Um, so 
that that one I really love the seek first to understand and I try and I try and ask myself when I get, ever get to a complicated situation I try and slow down and just figure out some answers first go to resources that I have that might have encountered that thing before and get their perspective on how I can better understand it um, so for communication I really think that um, it's not just expecting people to give us the information that we want. I think as leaders, we have to figure out how to get it from them. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect someone to come in here and communicate with me um, to the standard that I'm going to communicate with them. I feel like it's my responsibility to be able to lead that conversation. So I think if we can all approach conversations that way, it just puts us in a better footing. Um, so with that, with my rambling out of the way, does that bring up any thoughts for anyone? Does anyone have anything to contribute to this conversation? Well, one is that, you know, you talked about being genuine mm -hmm. in, and that's really kind of a core value that I live by um, just because I think it's important to always be the same person no matter who you're dealing with or what the situation is. I don't have a, a game face for, for being a commander or a game face for doing this in CAP or something else. It's, it's just me all the time. And I think that's important to, to, to do that because if, as long as you're open, then people know what to expect. I think that's important for them to understand, especially if you're a leader, for them to understand and know what to expect from you. Really good point. Uh, I think for those yeah, of us that know Major Moore, we would agree that you are the same person no matter when we get you. <laughs> Go ahead on the phone. Well, this is kind of Second Lieutenant Gutermuth speaking. Um, just to add on to that, something um, where you're communicating expectations. One of the things that I recently did for um, my squadron, and my squadron is the McCord, um, the cadet side of the McCord Composite Squadron. Um, and one of the things that we did recently was I got all of my cadets and I had five minute meetings with them where I told them um, my expectations, specifically in this case, it was for them to promote. Um, there is an item or a, a document that the DAP puts out that is called the uh, Personal Cadet Tracker. Um, and it lays out everything that they need to remote. Um, it's a great way of communicating not only um, goals, um, so having them set goals, but also what they have done and what they need to do. So finding additional resources, I think, is something that's very important uh, with a communication in addition to you know sitting down and saying, hey, this is what um, I think you need to do. And if you get here, then this is what's going to happen. In this case, you'll promote or you'll get a staff position or you'll be eligible for a staff position, et cetera. So I definitely think that finding other aids that are going to, um, you can you know, send home and, and keep the message going, like something like a visual aid is something that is very important on communicating. Absolutely. Um, as far as the, the communicating about a part of the authentic leadership, um, say what you're going to do and then do, or what is it, Colonel Heise? Say what you're gonna do and then do what you said you were going to do. Right, there it is, okay. So when I talk to people about their volunteer commitment, whether it's at a squadron or here at Wing Headquarters, I try to be very clear with them about my expectation for what that commitment will bring. Do I expect you to be at staff meetings every week? Yes or no? It might be different depending on the position. Um, do we expect um, that you come just once a month? Sure. If that's what you've got to contribute and you can commit to me once a month, then if you show up once a month, you've done what you said you were going to do and that will work. So it's that sort of expectation that we're talking about. If you um, say that you're going to run a registration table for someone or help with an activity um, and then completely fall out of view when the, when the actual thing comes around, um, I think we've all suffered that. And it's one of the most disappointing things that happens in Civil Air Patrol. It's heartbreaking because most of us won't go to the trouble of committing to it ourselves if we don't feel like our team is on board. So it's a hard thing when that team falls apart. Um, and it just goes to that core value thing. You know, don't don't commit to something if you really truly don't intend to follow through. All right. Are there any other comments before we shift gears again and start our staff meeting? Oh, we have a comment online. Let me pull that up here. Lieutenant Shoup says, it's important not to confuse authenticity with lack of self-control in speaking your mind. Being authentic doesn't always mean saying everything that is on your mind. 
<laughs> very true. Very, very, very true. That's a very good note. Um, yes. Uh, so with that, um, we're starting our staff meeting. You're more than welcome, cadets who are still hanging with us. This is an open call. We're not telling secrets, although we do talk about some interesting stuff that you might find useful. So you're all welcome to stick around. Uh, I am going to start our roll call. So I may ask a couple of you with just phone numbers to give me your name so that our safety officer can log that in our safety participation. So on the phone, I see Captain Lamb, uh, Colonels Maxwell, uh, Cadet Master Sergeant Wynn, Colonel Keeney, Chaplain Adam, Colonel Weber. Cadet, are you Major Desimony now? Uh, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Cadet Desimony. Okay. <laughs> Major Wiggs. Uh, Lieutenant, Cadet Lieutenant Gudermuth. Um, Captain Morgan. Major Kazmarsik. From 206-948, who were you? Two zero six nine four eight. Who are you? Okay, that's fine. But you're not getting safety credit. Um, I think uh, it, you're talking to me, right? Yes, yes, I am. Who are you? Oh, yes. This is this is Airman First Class Tracy. Uh, I'm out of McCord Squadron. Oh, you made it with us. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. So he's he's a little behind this evening. He was going to join us for our encampment call earlier. Um, real quick. Yes. Uh, Airman Tracy, I understand you did go to encampment as well? Yes, ma'am. And um, you had some great feedback. So just while I finish with um, the rest of my roll call here, why don't you tell us real quick, how was your encampment? Well, I would say my encampment experience was between uh, just crazy fun. I, I, I actually missed it today. I was thinking about, like, if there's a way to go back, I would. But, um... You go through a lot of ups and downs with your flight because you're in a squadron of flight, but you go through a lot of ups and downs that put you through leadership training. But it's, it's, you really form a bond with the people you're with, and it's just a really great overall experience. On, I would definitely consider going if anybody out there is considered going. But yeah, awesome. I wrote a whole thing up on it. Oh, you did. You I wrote think. something on it. That's great. I, I think, I think, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's on the court squadron website. Um, I emailed it in. I don't know. We will make sure that um, your unit commander works with our wing PAO, who actually I know is <laughs> on the phone. So, um, Lieutenant DeWinter, if you can reach out to Lieutenant Wanzer, I think that sounds like they've got some material for you. All right. Excellent. That's great. Thank Sorry. you for calling in, Airman Tracy. I understand that you're at, um, you were actually at a Boy Scout camp this week? Yeah, I'm, I'm right around this fire con, you guys. <laughs> Everybody's running around. People are poking each other's sticks. Oh, that sounds very safe. Our safety officer is, is plugging his ears. <laughs> it's not a Civil Air Patrol event, so we're clear. No. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, go enjoy some s'mores with the rest of the scouts, and thank you for taking the time to call in. <laughs> Anytime. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry for the sidebar there, everybody. Um, I think we all agree that was worth it. Um, let's see. So, Lieutenant Shoup uh, from Skagit is on. Who's calling from 360852? It's Lieutenant Colonel Wallace. Aha, welcome. Um, and then we have Major Kelly on the phone, Lieutenant Hulse, Lieutenant Wrighton, Colonel Courtney, Lieutenant DeWinter, uh, Colonel Lance, and Major Wittenberg. <laughs> And then in the room, we have Major Moore, Colonel Pearson, Colonel Heise, Colonel Dukes, Major Boonprom, Colonel Chismadia, myself, Captain Jerwa, and of course, Colonel Norman, our wing commander. Okay, so with that, we have a safety briefing tonight. Is that correct, sir? I believe so. 
Okay, let me get that pulled up for you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Don't run around the fire with sticks. <laughs> Here's your clicker. It's all yours. First off, I'd like to make a comment about encampment safety. And the encampment that just ended a few days ago was, for the most part, very safe. And the reason it was safe was that activities were well-planned and well-executed. Planning is very important for safety.